What's up everybody, Kevin Barnett here back in the Carbine 3D Studio and maybe you're fairly new to CNC. Perhaps you just purchased one of our Shapeoko or Nomad machines and you're trying to get an item out of your head and into the real world. How do you get started? How do you move forward? Andy Bird is back with us once again. Get inside his process. Take some ideas and apply them to your own experience. How do I price an item? Where do I sell it? Learn from one of our customers. Here's Andy with From Paper to Market. Enjoy. So if you're anything like me, I was super excited when I first got my Shape Oko. I could not wait to get that thing unboxed, assembled, and get going. Now, also if you're anything like me, when I got it all assembled and up and going, I didn't have any background. And I was like, oh, what are these programs? What do, what do I have to do? How do I make things? So I had a lot of ideas on things that I could make. And I want to make this. I want to make that and I want to be able to sell this and sell that. And I ran into a lot of barriers. Like, okay, well now I gotta, how do I take this from concept to market? So today I want to take you guys through the process of things that I've learned, because I believe with some time and a little bit of learning that you can do this too. Now let's get started. So I've had this idea for a little while of, of a salt seller, I believe is what they're called. So as I was looking for some inspiration and kind of uh, what was out there, I came across a couple different ones and a lot of them are made out of bamboo. Now, I don't want to copy someone's exact idea, but I want to you know, make it my own. So I'm going to make mine out of cherry with a lid that is not attached and it does both salt and pepper. So one of the first things that comes to mind when designing a product are what are my design constraints? What are my parameters that I have to work within? And what size do I want my product? So with this specific product, I don't need to create an eight inch tall salt seller. Obviously, I don't know who needs that much salt. So taking in consideration what the machine can do, what the tooling can do, what tool paths, and um, all those things are definitely considerations. All right, to get the idea out of my head and onto a piece of paper, rather than jumping straight into the computer, um, I like to sketch it first. Uh, our overall height is going to be two inches, and then our depth, how far we're gonna go down here, is going to be one and a half inches, um, or thereabouts. I might do 175, we'll see how, we, how it works out. Um, but we wanna leave some here on the bottom. So our overall um, width, now this is gonna be a circle, right? Uh, so our overall width in every direction is going to be five inches. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us enough room to be able to divide it, to put a divider here in the middle. It's actually gonna go all the way down. That will do salt on one side, pepper on the other. And that gives us our basic shape. All right, so now it's time to digitalize our rough sketch here. So using Carbide Create for this, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Carbide Create or this is your first time, um, I'll link a video right up here that will go into more depth than I can in this video um, and will catch you up to where we're going to start. So if that's you, you can pause this video, check out that video, and then come back to this point. So now we have a physical product. How do we sell it, right? That's why we wanted to make products in the first place. I'm gonna walk you through my thought process on pricing, where to sell it, and where we go from here. 
Pricing is one of those hotly debated topics on the internet. If you look everywhere, everybody has a different formula. You're supposed to do it this way, you're supposed to do it that way. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is no right or wrong way. There might be better ways or worse ways, but if you were to ask me, Andy, how would you price this item that we made? How would we price this salt and pepper cellar? So first thing I would think of is material cost. We use cherry. Um, I estimate we have two to $3 of material into this. Next, I think about time. So how much time did this take us? Machine time was a half an hour. So after I have those numbers in my mind, then I go to the internet and I do some comparable research. And a lot of people might disagree with this, but this is a fantastic way to see what the market will bear. I come up with a range. I look for low prices and I look for high prices. So now that we have our price range narrowed down, let's set that to the side for a second and figure out where should we sell this item? There are a lot of options that come to mind, right? There are Facebook, there's Etsy, there's a website, uh, craft shows, just to name a few. There's endless, uh, kind of an overwhelming number of where do I sell this thing? So what I would say and what my thought process is, is what are your goals? Now you really have to think about, do you, is this your full-time job? Do you want to make a living doing this? Then that's going to be different than if, hey, I just want to make something and sell it for the first time just to see how it goes. Or I want to, I want to buy a Shape Oco and sell products just to pay for the machine. And then I just want to enjoy the hobby myself. Now, obviously there's no wrong way to do it, but answering that question is going to dictate kind of the direction that you go. Now that's the big picture, right? So for this particular scenario, we just want to make something from the idea from conception, right? We just bought our Shape Oco and we want to make something, make it a reality and try to sell it. All right. So to bring this all together, what would I sell this for and where would I sell it? I would sell this first one for $25 and I would list it on Facebook. And I bet that this would sell really quickly. $25 is actually pretty cheap for this, but you have to think about it. What you will learn in the process of selling these items is almost more valuable in the beginning than the $25. Say we have max of $3 of materials into it and we're just starting out, right? We're just a hobbyist. If this took me a half a day to set up, to cut, I made $22 um, just to learn the process of making a product, to learn how to sell it. And next time, maybe I raise the price to $30 and I can batch out five at a time. That's $150. And as word spreading, you can create more and you can see how this can compound on each other. Now, remember, you only have to set it up once. You only have to design it and carbide create once. Now it's plug and play and repeat. And pretty much the amount of time that it takes your, you to get your stock ready and the time for mach the machine to cut and you to apply finish is as fast as you can make them. You could make 20 of these in a day easily. So I share all this with you because this is the personal journey that I've gone on over the last three years. I started selling one item at a time and that led to more items, word of mouth spreading. And so one thing led build on the other. Now that might not be your personal goal and that's completely fine. So I hope by showing you the process of taking a product from paper to market, really remove some barriers that maybe were holding you back. If you want to learn more about some of the topics that we shared today and some of the resources that we pointed out to, be sure to check out those links in the description below. I'm Andy, and I'll see you next time I'm seeing, seeing something.